In this chapter, we are going to review the three aspects of the clinical trial that ensure the proper and ethical conduct of clinical studies, monitoring, auditing and inspections, collectively known as quality control procedures. In order to fully understand monitoring, first one must have a better understanding of what quality systems are and what are their purposes. Quality control systems are the operational techniques and activities undertaken to verify the requirements for the quality of trial-related activities. Monitoring is a part of the QC activity. Monitoring activities are undertaken by the trial members themselves. At the same time, audit and inspection are part of QA activities, but are undertaken by personnel independent of trial, in accordance, of course, with the protocol of the study, standard operating procedures, or SOPs, GCP, and applicable regulatory requirements. Here we will provide you with a better understanding of the position of the monitor, also called clinical research associate, and what his role and responsibilities are concerning clinical trials and GCP. A monitor is an individual employed by a pharmaceutical or medical device manufacturer by a contract research organization, CRO, usually acting on a sponsor's behalf, or by an academic institute conducting clinical trials. Some of the major responsibilities of the monitor are assuring the protection of the rights, safety and well-being of human study subjects, to analyze and evaluate clinical data, to ensure investigator and site compliance with the study drug protocol, overall clinical objectives, FDA EMA regulations, ICH guidelines, and good clinical practice. Another responsibility is to help in the study site selection process, initiate and eventually close out clinical study sites. To monitor the progress of clinical study sites, participating in a clinical study, and to ensure that protocol is followed and data is reported accurately. To make certain that the scientific integrity of the data collected is protected and verified. Also to assure that adverse events are correctly documented and reported. Review all case report forms and compare them to source documents. Auditing is the systematic and independent examination of trial-related activities and documents to determine whether the evaluated trial-related activities were conducted and whether the data was recorded, analysed and accurately reported according to the protocol, sponsor, SOPs, GCP and applicable regulatory requirements. Most cited clinical trial areas during audits include adverse event review and reporting, closure of study or lapse in approvals while studying, Related activities which are still ongoing. Informed consent process and documentation. Drug or device accountability. And protocol adherence. Now we will define inspection and explain the main differences between inspection and audit. The act by a regulatory authority or authorities of conducting an official review of documents, facilities, records, and any other resources that are deemed by the authorities to be related to the clinical trial and that may be located at the site of the trial, at the sponsors and or CRO's facilities or at other establishments deemed appropriate by the regulatory authorities. Some of the major differences between an audit and an inspection are In audit, Inspectors are employed by the company who work for active clinical quality assurance function. An audit is done to ensure that a site complies with protocol, SOP, GCP and applicable regulatory requirements. In inspection, inspectors are employed by government, though the agency of the regulatory or competent authority, the FDA or the DCGI. An inspection is done to ensure that trial-related obligations and acceptability of resultant clinical data is relevant. Now that we have reviewed the differences between the audits and inspections, let's take a look at what the inspection process is. 
The inspections consist of site visits to the organization and, where appropriate, selected clinical investigator sites. The inspection starts with an opening meeting where the lead inspector usually outlines the scope and purpose of the inspection, confirms the inspection plan and introduces the inspectors. Upon completion of the inspection process, if inspectors find issues related to the clinical trial process, certain measures should be taken. Here are a few examples of most common findings during an inspection. Protocol non-compliance, inadequate or inaccurate records, informed consent issues, among others.